this talk about What's up guys? Welcome back. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm going to do something I've been meaning to do for a while, since I started this channel actually. I'm going to do a tour of the room I'm in right now, which is my movie room slash comic book room slash toy. It's just a lot of stuff. Um, it's where I keep all my things, all my toys, all my movies. It's not a home theater. There's no like... Um, T big TV set. This is where I really watch my movies. It's just where I keep everything. I watch my movies in my living room. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of my, uh, you know, geek den, nerd room, whatever you want to call it. I don't call it my man cave. I know that's kind of the go-to term for these type of rooms, but I don't really call it the man cave. I don't think it really fits that description. When I think man cave, I think bars and um, football helmets and sports things and girl calendars and that, that's not what this room is. So I call it, I tend to call it my geek den, nerd room, movie room, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to show it to you. Uh, this is where I film a lot of my videos. So you might've seen some things in the background already, but I'm going to kind of just do a, not a too in depth run through. I'm not going to go into too much detail. If there's any aspect of this room that you'd like to see, me going to detail on, I could do separate videos for some of these collections and things that I have. But I'm just going to kind of show you, you know, where I hang out, where I keep all my stuff. It's just kind of my, my little sanctuary. Um, and it allows me to not litter our entire home with all my nerd stuff. So anyway, without further ado, let's jump right into the room tour. So I'm going to start on uh, this this half of the room. This is kind of where I keep a lot of my comic books and comic book related stuff. Figures, toys, comics themselves, my um, trade paperbacks and things like that. So um, I'll, kind of, I'll kind of work away or work my way around to where a lot of my movie stuff is. Um, and then I have one particular item that is kind of the crown jewel of my entire collection. All my possessions. It's kind of the... The big one, and I'll show you that at the end. Kind of keep that as a little surprise. Uh, not so little surprise, though. It's kind of big. So, anywho, uh, the top shelf, or this whole shelf, is where I keep a lot of my comic book-related figures and statues. I am a pretty big DC fan. There's a few Marvel things sprinkled in here, though. That top shelf's just some of the DC figures. Uh, Joker's kind of hidden there. There he is. And then some bank busts of uh, Nightwing, Superman, and Batman. And then that Arkham Robin back there, which I'm not actually a big fan of the look of Rob, uh, actually most of the character designs in Arkham. Um, but eh, the figure is kind of cool, so I got a real cheap ones. And this shelf is what I have of the Artifacts figures, which I absolutely love these. I wish I had more, but they're not cheap. So I kind of get them. They're a little few and far between when I do get them. Um, but they're absolutely gorgeous little statues. They can run anywhere from $40 to $120 for, depending on the character. So I don't know if some characters are done in a longer run than others. Um, but I don't know what makes the price difference. And then this is a first appearance figure of Nightwing. Shows on the base there. The uh, first appearance was Tales of Teen Titans, number 44. A book I do not have, but God, I wish I did. Uh, this shelf, some more statues. This, uh... Metal, this doesn't really show you, Metal um, Jim Lee Batman, which is very articulate actually. Um, has a lot of different hands and uh, heads and stuff, but I, that's one of my favorite ones there. Um, and then there's this um, Thomas Wayne Flashpoint Batman as well, which is, these ones, these are, I can't remember the, the name of them, but these are like a Japanese... Uh, company. These are Japanese figures. They're essentially the design of them. They're basically Ken dolls. Like if you take the gloves and shoes and stuff off, you can see that the feet and the toes and stuff they look like Ken dolls, just with very highly detailed faces. Uh, and his sword is back there somewhere too. I just want to have him hold it because it kind of looks awkward. This Aquaman statue. Um, this actually suffered a, a tragedy once. 
It was in a glass case that I'll show you a bit later and the glass case collapsed on the inside. He was on the bottom and all the weight of everything fell on him and broke him into many, many pieces. Uh, I was able to glue him back together pretty well. You can't really tell, but there's a couple little things, little chips out of him still and his staff broke in like three places. Uh, and then there's a pretty cool Spider-Man there. Uh, down here I have my Batman v Superman statues, which I never did get Wonder Woman, but maybe I'll come across her one day, but it's just the four of them in the set. Uh, and then just some randoms here. The Dark Knight Trilogy figures, a um, couple DC Universe and Arkham City, excuse me, Batman statues, and then these kind of cool vinyl vixen things here. Uh, and then the bottom is just some some books. Some, not all comic book related, um, but it's kind of a mismatch. Some guitar tab books. This is um, comic book related trading cards, which I won't get into, but there's a few of them in there. But yes, that's kind of my main main shelf when it comes to figures and statues and stuff. I also have that Batman there. He, that's the box that that Jim Lee Batman statue came in. Super alloy. Yeah. And oh, there's my Dorb XL Batman as well, kind of hiding there. Beside that, um, I have this shelf. This is where I keep my trades. Um, and then these bins down here, just kind of random stuff. The bottom one, bottom left, that's uh, Mad Magazines that I still have. Top one are my comic book supplies, like bags and boards and tape and labels and just random stuff in there. And then I keep my Blu-ray slip covers in these two cases. The bottom one are Disney, the top one is all the rest of them. That's an old PS3 that I have still. It's a backwards compatible one, so... I never really use it, but it's there if I ever need it. And then my trades again. On top here, you'll notice a little TV playing Ferris Bueller. Um, I set this up recently. This was just kind of in a closet. And I thought, you know what? When I'm in here doing stuff, instead of just having like music on in my, my uh, headphones, I like to have uh, movies playing. So brought out one of my, this is my region free Blu-ray player. And this is my Sony, those old Sony uh, 3D TVs they had a little while ago. It doesn't have the stand, so it's on like an art easel. So I can just have movies playing. It's not really a home theater, as you can see, but it allows me to have movies on in here if I want to just have them on the background. been watching Ferris Bueller, um, as you can tell. And then behind the Ferris Bueller box is my... I am going to show you this because this is pretty awesome. My... Friday 13th Part 6, Jason Voorhees figure. Pretty awesome. If you go on to uh, Spider Geek's um, YouTube page, he does a pretty in-depth um, review of that figure. Spider Geek, you should check him out. It's a good good channel. <laughs> this is a uh, kind of ridiculous license plate I found at a fair a couple weeks ago. I had to get it. I couldn't pass it up. It's so... Oops. It's so... <laughs> So stupid, but awesome at the same time. So I had to get it. It's stupid. So anyway, uh, behind there, I got to find a better place for this now that I have the TV. That's a really nice DC Comics, um, like glass framed picture. I just got to find a better place for it since I set this TV up. Pan them back a bit. These are where I got some of my bigger posters, Power Rangers. Uh, that's just like a reproduction promotional poster. Uh, but these two are actual original theatrical posters. The BVS and Civil War. Civil War, I did a video on that a little while ago. And yeah, as you can see, they are not framed. That's one of my goals in life is to get all my posters framed. They are held up with thumbtacks, but the thumbtacks are not pu uh, puncturing the pictures. I have some sticky, uh, removable, like uh, sticky tack behind them. And then the tacks are just up again, like... The pin does not go through the paper, just beside the paper, and it kind of holds them into place. So, uh, And then a couple cool vinyl um, posters, just kind of a Marvel Universe one that my son picked out for me for Christmas, um, which was a pretty sweet present. Uh, Detective Comic Zero special issue print, which is a good a book I do have and did enjoy, so I th thought that'd be cool to have on the wall. Couple Power Rangers figures I got for my birthday. Um, 
this pile on top, these are all my comics. Um, they're kind of sorted by, as you can kind of read the labels. Uh, the two on the end are just kind of odds and ends. Some I'm probably going to get rid of or sell or whatever. This is my pile to read, which is actually much larger because I'm about a, almost two or three months behind picking up all my books at the comic shop. So I, I dropped some books recently, but good God, I have so much reading to do. That's just a few that I picked up. So yeah, I'm super behind. So anyway, following along, this is just kind of a, another random shelf. The top has some of my better, I've gotten rid of a lot of my video game related stuff the last little while. I had tons of toys and figures and statues and games and I got rid of most of it. I just kept those stuff I really, really liked. These are two of them. Um, that Lock and Master Chief statue is amazing. And I really like that Marcus Phoenix there. Um, this I got for like 10 bucks. This um, egg, I can't remember his name, Aguilar, whatever. Michael Fassbender, um, Assassin's Creed statue. It wasn't a very great movie, but that's a pretty cool statue. A detailed Michael Fassbender face is what sold me on it. Um, a few VHS tapes here. I do have a working VCR that I never use, but a lot of these I just have because I think either the boxes are cool looking or like the box arts really nice or some of it's just nostalgia. But yeah, just a few. There's a few other ones scattered in other places. And this I got just because if you guys ever watched the uh, that there's a Jerry Maguire VHS store in Los Angeles. And there's a pretty cool video showing them kind of opening that store. And there's 14,000 copies of Jerry Maguire on VHS in this place. And they want to build a pyramid out of these VHS. It's, it's ridiculous and stupid. But it's also kind of amazing. So you should search for that video. I can't, sorry, I can't remember who, the name of the website that started that little project. Um, and then the rest of the shelves, mostly books. Um, just some, some movie related, some biographies. Um, the Resident Evil novels, which I was a big fan of back in the day. Uh, the only three physical current generation video games I own. Mass Effect, Dark Souls 3, and Infamous First Light that I imported from the UK. Um, I pretty much just get all my current video games digitally. I don't really get them on disc anymore. Just because I have such a large hard drive for my Xbox and my PS4, so... Yeah, I, st I have a lot of my older video games still, my 316 PS3, but um, I don't really get physical copies of current games anymore. And then the rest of this shelf is pretty much books. My I am kind of a uh, little bit of a history buff. Um, I've read a lot of World War II stuff. Um, big Band of Brothers fan, so I got some, some books related to some of the soldiers featured in that book and the miniseries, some of their biographies, all excellent. This one here, uh, Brothers in Battle, Best of Friends, is one of the best books I ever read. Um, Bill Garnier and Babe Heffron's book, they co-wrote it. It's amazing. Uh, and then some more film related, uh, uh, Asian cinema related books there. A couple random ones on top there. And then some, just some magazines, a lot of uh, like theater magazines that they have at my local cinema and some entertainment weeklies and stuff in there. A random Tom Cruise book I found at a dollar store, which has like a $50 cover price and I got it for $4. And the rest of my film books there. Not a lot of them. I don't buy a lot of books, but every once in a while one will catch my eye or I'll find one really cheap at a uh, flea market or something or a dollar store and I'll pick it up. And then my um, film soundtracks soundtracks which are pretty much the only physical cds i still buy just for collectible purposes uh last one i got was john wick chapter two there i just like them like to have them they're not i don't actually use them i just get them off my google play account and i just collect the, the uh, cds okay to pretty much finish up this wall are a majority of my pop figures these are all my comic book related pop figures. Um, I have a fair amount. I'm not going to go into too much detail on them, but just kind of scan through. I used to be a pretty big pop collector, but I've really cut back. I've sold off a lot. They just, they're great, but they're 
hard to keep up with anymore. A couple years ago it was a lot easier. Gets pricey, gets expensive sometimes, especially if you miss one when it's launching. You have to buy it in the aftermarket. It can be ridiculous. So I get what ones I can find, um, but I'm very, very, very selective now. So I just pretty much get uh, very specific comic book, mostly DC as you can see. Um, I'll just scroll down. You can see what they are. I don't need to go into detail. Um, I will point out probably my favorite of my comic book pops when I get to it. Uh, and I think I passed it. Oh, where'd it go? Uh, I think it's on the top shelf. But probably my favorite is the uh, Suicide Squad Batman. One of my favorites anyway. Oh, there he is. Um, just because it's basically just the BVS Batman with the breather, but it's really hard to find. Um, but I did track one down at a fan expo in Toronto last year, so that was really exciting. Um, and then I also really love, really love these Thomas Wayne, um, Batman pops. Earth 2 and Flashpoint, but yeah, so that's the pop figures that I have. Some of them, the rest I'll show you shortly. And then over here, actually, there's also, there's my reproduction Turtles figures, which I absolutely love these. These bring back a lot of childhood memories. I had to get these when these came out. I had to. They're so perfect. I actually have the van, too, which you'll see in a second. Um, it's a Ghostbuster figure back there. Winston was always my favorite as a kid, so a friend of mine got me that for a Christmas present. Um, oh, yeah, there's more pops here. So this shelf on this back wall, I'll do the back wall too, while we're here. Uh, just more random stuff on this shelf. My turtle van, that's the reproduction one. Uh, that's the box for an Ecto-1 that you'll see later. Um, and then these are my Ninja Turtle, Power Ranger, and Nin uh, Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers pops. Um, right there. This random Bob's Burgers pop. I had that because my son, my son's four, he knows I love Pops, and he went into a store and picked this one out because I love Pops, and I love hamburgers, and he had to get it for me, so it was really sweet, and I love this one. Even though I don't watch Bob's Burgers, that one's a very special one for that reason. Next shelf is my Power Rangers uh, Legacy figures, which I do not have the Red Ranger. And it kills me that I don't. I missed out on him. I had him in my hand once. And now I cannot find him for barely less than $200 now. So, unfortunately, unless I just kind of stumble across him one day, I may not have a complete set. But at least I have the rest of them. My favorite Rangers are the green and blue. So, I have them. So, those are really nice, nice, nice figures. And my I put that hat kind of in the middle because I don't really wear it. I sweat too much and I'll destroy it. And then this next shelf, some more random, so it's a little dark, I don't have a light, but Master Chief just kind of chilling, he's tired. Um, and then the Killzone helmet, came with Killzone 3. Uh, just some frames and some video game steel books uh, that I have kind of tucked away there. Um... My little bit of sports memorabilia there, my Ed Bell for mask. I was a big fan. I was a big sports fan growing up as a kid, and he was my favorite player. So I have a little bit of kind of represent him on my in my room. And then wrapping this up, uh, some Halo stuff. I love that Mass Chief helmet. It's one of my favorite collector's editions that ever came out. Uh, the Reach statue, and then my. Xbox, official Xbox magazines down here. Um, I have everything, most issues from late 2006 up until they kind of ended, shut down their U.S. office um, a couple years ago. So, And then some random old PlayStation magazines and some video game strategy guides I have left. I used to have probably 200 strategy guides and I got rid of um, pretty much all of them. And just some random stuff there. And my uh, my amp. So that was the first, kind of first half of the room. Uh, like I said, it's pretty much all like comic book related, um, superhero related, a lot of toys and stuff. The next half I'm going to show you is pretty much all just 
movie related movies films um i kind of just kind of segregate the room that way i don't know why i just i don't really mix a lot of stuff up i keep one half comic book stuff the other half film stuff so i'll start with the rest of the back wall that's the shelf we just looked at um my capote poster again not framed but this is actually just a uh, one I got from a video store a long time ago, so it's pretty beat up anyway. It's not really a theatrical poster, like it has the own it on DVD and all that stuff on it, but I still love this poster, love this movie. Um, Philip Seymour Hoffman was a treasure. So I keep the poster up. If I ever get a frame for it, it'll probably look nicer. Uh, beside that is a pretty sweet taxi driver um, poster it's very narrow i think they call these lobby cards is the term i'm looking for um and then down here is just some storage bins just see there's the video games like 316 ps3 and um this bin here is just some random stuff and these are my tv dvds and my cds and just some random randoms and just stuff i don't have room for i got a lot of stuff just in bins that and my guitar is over here couple of my guitars. I have just a, a square one, just the old Yamaha, and then that's my Epiphone Les Paul. That's just kind of tucked away there. Um, and beside that are my DVDs, which I did kind of a quick DVD video a little while ago, but I've actually since gotten... I don't do pickup videos enough, but I have picked up uh, a few handful of DVDs recently, just... You know, a lot of the stuff I'm finding that you can't get on Blu-ray that I know of. That I've been finding really cheap at like thrift stores and stuff. Just kind of getting some stuff I've missed over time that I, you know, can't get on Blu-ray. There's those HDVDs again. But I won't go into too much detail. That's just, you know, my DVDs. And then beside that, this is the glass cabinet I was talking about that has collapsed on me twice and before i get into detail i'll tell you why if you look at this shelf this is ikea made that glass shelf is not quite wide enough to go wall to wall so it kind of sits on these little nub things you got to get them just right if they're a little too far one way or the other they will collapse and that's what happened to me twice miraculously the shelves never broke, so the glass is good quality. Okay, like this, sorry, I had a little technical difficulty there. This top shelf literally dropped out and went all the way down to the bottom with all the stuff. I can't remember what I had on it then, but it was a quite a disaster. But anyway, it's fine now. It's been good for a while. So this top shelf um, just has some my larger figures that I can't put inside my Iron Man um, and my endoskeleton they're both um, my god real real toys I think is the company R-E-E-L toys um, just amazing uh, they both light up and everything they don't have I don't think they have batteries in them but they both all light up and unfortunately the endoskeleton took a tumble one one time he did fall and break I got him I have bad luck with these sometimes, oh my god. But I did get them kind of put back together for the most part, but what you can't really tell from where I'm standing is the permanent damage. A couple little little bits that could wouldn't go back together properly, but he still looks cool and he's kind of safe back there. And then my, this is a Terminator 3 statue, but I don't know who made this because I got this off a friend of mine and I cannot, I mean I've googled um, like Terminator 3 statue and stuff before, figures. I think I've found found it online just by searching, but it's really nice. I mean, it's not sideshow quality, but still great. And yeah, I really, really love that. Um, and then I just kind of threw that VHS there because it kind of looks cool. You might, you'll see that. I just kind of throw VHS tapes in with stuff. Uh, and I apologize, but Django Fett, I'm a big fan of Django Fett. So I got a couple Django Fett... Uh, Wait, I don't apologize. I have no shame. Django Fett's a cool character. He might not be in the best Star Wars movie ever made, but I still think he's a pretty cool character. At least he looks cool anyway. So, I have a couple Django Fett statues there. Uh, 
I'm gonna go with glass. So this top shelf, just my Back to the Future, my DeLorean, diecast DeLorean, and then uh, I got the VHS Back to the Future trilogy back there, just for just for decoration, um, and the Vinyl Idol uh, Doc and Marty, and then following the same theme, diecast Ecto, and uh, Peter. And sorry, I had a little hiccup there. Peter and Egon um, with the VHS as well. So kind of a theme going between those two shelves. And then by down here again, no die cast, but I have the uh, these Ninja Turtles figures that came in a few years ago with the VHS Turtles Two. It's the only one I have. Um, and then down here, just some randoms. My Stay Puff piggy bank, my Leo, and my, this is the replica Buzz Lightyear. There's a certificate back there. The box got too damaged, I had to throw it out, but it is a movie perfect Buzz Lightyear. So this is basically exactly what Andy's Buzz Lightyear would be like. Um, it's There's a one that looks very similar, but it's more of a toy, like a kid's toy that doesn't have a lot of the detail in it. It's really, really nice. Um, I got it for, I think, Christmas a few years ago. But yeah, it's like a perfect replica of um, Andy's Buzz. There's a Woody as well. I'd like to get one day. But uh, I'm going to kind of start here and go up. These are my reaction figures. So I got uh, Johnny, who is the real hero of the film, as we all know. And Daniel, who is the bully. He's an arrogant little prick. And then Mr. Miyagi, who I don't know what he's doing with Daniel. He he shouldn't be hanging out with Daniel. He's a bad influence. Uh, Michael Myers and Jimmy. So I used to have a lot more reaction figures too, but not too big into them anymore. So I kind of sold them all off. My uh, Arnold, framed Arnold, T2 thing. Uh, and then up here, a couple framed lobby cards as well. I have a lot more of these I don't have frames for. That light is right in a bad spot. But one day. I also, it's not that I don't have frames as much as I don't have wall space. My room is, this room is taken up by shelves. And there's very little space for hanging posters. But uh, And some more pop figures here. These are all my film and TV related pops. Um, and yes, on the other shelf I will point out. I do have technically film and TV pops. Um, CW like Flash and... Um, I have Gotham Pops, and I have BVS and Civil War, but I still group those with comic books more than uh, than films, because it just kind of seems to make most sense. So there is my Godfather set. Uh, and then below here, some Hateful Eight, uh, my Travis Bickle, my John Wick 2 Chase, which is just not that great. It's actually just the same John Wick pop, but with some blood on his face, but yeah, whatever. Couple Pulp Fiction and my Bill. Uh, I can never find the Bride Pop. And I like more Pulp Fiction Pops too, but I never see them anywhere. And I don't like buying Pops online. I do not trust. I do like the boxes to say nice. I don't trust the shipping. So if I can't find it somewhere in a store or in a flea market or whatever, then I just don't buy them. So uh, yeah, this pretty cool Bride figure. Um... And then the next shelf is my Stranger Things Pops. Sorry. The lighting's not too great on this side of the room, apparently. Um, I'm missing a couple. Um, but these are the ones I... Like, the important ones I wanted. That Chase Eleven's pretty cool. Um, the next shelf is... Some, so my Back to the Future Time... Or DeLorean. And my Doc Brown. Now this here... I'm not going to go into too much detail, but... Um, it's going to fall over. So what this is, that's my Taxi Driver Laserdisc, Criterion Laserdisc. Um, I also have my vinyl soundtracks, which I have like Hateful Eight and Django Unchained and Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Um, The Mission, I think, is one. I just get them for, I don't actually have a turntable, I just get them for, I used to have them all framed on the wall. Uh, but again, ran out of wall space, so I kind of took them all out of frames and have them just kind of stacked here. A couple other laser discs back there I have. I think I have Rear Window, Once Upon a Time in the West. 
Uh, and then a couple actual record albums are in there too, but um, yeah, they're just, I, I like them. They just look cool. They look nice when they're framed on the wall, so hopefully one day I'll get them back up in frames, but let's put that one in front because that's, I'd love if Criterion got Taxi Driver back. Uh, and then, yeah, the rest of my pops, just kind of random ones. Ghostbusters, the uh, horror ones, Michael, Ghostface, Jason, Ripley, though Aliens is not really horror, but kind of works. Excuse me, um, Army of Darkness, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Leatherface. Uh, I'm not going to read all these, you can see them. And then some more vinyl idols, the dodgeball ones, and uh, this random Rick Grimes. So we're almost ready to wrap it up here. There's not much left. This wall here, uh, just some film posters. Um, Drive, Django. Django is an original theatrical used poster. Like it was actually used at a theater. So it's pretty beat up, ripped and torn. And I got it for a good price from a, from a poster vendor. Um, again, if I could get in a frame, it would look a lot better. But you can't really see just how kind of tattered it, it really is. But it's a cool poster. This drive is a reproduction. If you get close enough, I don't know if you can tell. Um, not really. It really does look like a giant printing from like a printer. But from a distance and stuff, it still looks really nice. Um, but it is a reproduction. And then just a couple... Uh, I just frame these. They just come out of magazines, these posters. Um, so I just kind of... Like, these are the come out of the same magazines I get at the theater. And they have two or three, like, theatrical, like, full-page theatrical posters that look really cool when you kind of tear them out and put them in a frame. So, just a few there. Um, I have, like, a stack of them that I don't have frames for. This is the Little White Lies book that comes in the Canadian Drive Blu-ray. I have a few of them, so I thought I'd frame one. A um, couple just cards from Blu-rays there. Uh, my, not really desk, this is where I keep my laptop. I just kind of, I use that keyboard and mouse with my laptop because I like them better than the, the actual laptop keyboard. But this is where I just kind of go down on my knees. I don't have a desk and a chair. I don't have room for them, but I just picked up this little table so I'd have something to put my computer on. Uh, and something that I can, because I do occasionally podcast as well. So this is a lot more comfortable than laying on the floor. So, yeah, it's just a little desk thing. Vader there. Um, I think I showed him off in video already before. And finally, the Blu-ray collection. As you've all seen, if you've been watching my channel, you've seen most of these. I've actually gotten... This has changed a bit since I did my collection videos. I've gotten rid of a lot. I'd say probably 30 or 40... Blu-rays I've gotten rid of that were featured in that video. And I've acquired at least the same amount, maybe a few more since. So maybe um, I may do another collection video sometime shortly down the road. A quicker one, um, just kind of a, a breeze through, not a fully in-depth collection video. But it has changed quite a bit. I've reorganized it a bit, which I'll show you briefly. Um, before I had them all mixed in. Now I've actually separated my my uh, big box Blu-rays first, followed by Digibooks, followed by Steelbooks. Do do do, going kind of quick. I'm not gonna linger on them. And then when the Steelbooks end, we get into just our standard A to Z Amory. Um, and because of the quantity I have now, the A to Z actually goes. Zoop. Kind of bleeds into my 4K shelf. So I need another shelf. I need one of these bad boys. I'm going to pick one up from Ikea when I get the chance. It will go over there, which will mean I'll have to find a new place for these posters. This room, as you could tell, is jammed pretty tight. So I don't have a lot of play when it comes to the room. So, um,. Oh, and then my, I think I showed this up before. That's my signed, I don't have a lot of autographs, but um, that's my signed Michael Bean autograph. Okay, so I just remembered something. As I was about to conclude that part of the, um, that part of the video, 
Um, when I s mentioned my autographed um, Michael Bean, I do have another very significant, very special autograph that I'm going to show you right now. This has been kind of... I used to have this framed, but I need to get a new frame for it. Um, now, a hint is this envelope is from Hong Kong. So, let me just tell you a little quick story. <sighs> Years ago, I think it was 2003. Um, Jackie Chan started this thing called his tile project. Maybe some of you have heard of this. Uh, you might be able to find like pictures and stuff on Google. But what he was calling out for is he wanted to decorate the wall outside his Hong Kong office with tiles painted, decorated, and sent to him from his fans. So I thought, hey, that's kind of a cool idea. Um, I'd love to be a part of something like that. Because you would send in the tiles, they would um, attach them to the outside of this wall, and then the whole idea was that he'd have stuff from his fans from all around the world kind of decorating this wall. I was like, wow, that's a cool idea. So I went to the hardware store, got a couple tiles, went home. I mean, I was, what, 20. So I decorated them, wrote a little like letter on one of them. The other one was just kind of decoration. Sent it out and then thought, all right, that's right, I've done my part. Um, if I'm ever in Hong Kong, I'll see what it looks like on the wall. Never thought of, never thought about it again. I was just like, that's cool. I've done my thing. Who knows what will ever become of these tiles. Well, a few months later, I get a letter from, I'll cover the address, even though it's an old address, JC Group. I'm like, JC Group? That's, that's Jack, Jackie Chan's company. The, uh, 2004. No, 2003. I'm like, what the hell? Open it up. There's a really nice letter, which I will read to you here. Uh, so I'm just gonna again. I don't live at this address anymore, but I'm just gonna cover it anyway because this is YouTube. So there's the date, November seventeenth, two thousand three. Reads, dear Jeff, thank you for sending your beautiful handmade tile to Jackie. We understand that your tile is unique and exclusive for him. So that we will lam it's a little bit broken English, but that's okay. So we will laminate your tile for protect it from any possible damages, and we will put your tile on the wall in Jackie's Hong Kong head office. Please check our website for follow-up of the tile project or come to Hong Kong and visit our office. <laughs> sure. In close, please find an autographed photo to show Jackie's appreciation. Thank you for your support. Mickey Koo. Sounds like a sweet girl. Let me show you that photo. How freaking, I don't say freaking a lot. I'm trying to keep this clean. How fucking cool is that? Jackie is holding the two tiles that I made. I was, I couldn't believe it. I was beside myself for weeks. Um, like it blew my mind. I had no, and then it started, I started seeing online, like all these other people posting their pictures. Every tile sent. He took a photo of them and then signed it and they sent it off to the person who sent the tile. Like, it's pro this is the coolest thing I've ever gotten um, when it comes to memorabilia, anything like that. This thing is just incredible. So how cool is that? How cool is that? Those are the tiles I made. Nothing, nothing great. I mean, I, I just kind of whipped them up quickly. This is just kind of a letter. Kind of a cheesy fan letter, but... Yeah, like that, this is, this has got to get a new frame. I got to get like a good quality frame for that in the, the letter. But yeah, I just thought I'd share that with you guys. Pretty awesome. All right, guys. So thanks for tuning in. Now to wrap up this video, before I give you kind of a quick full shot of the room, um, I did say I had something kind of special to share at the end. This item I'm about to show you is definitely... It's not the carpet, no. Um, it's definitely the crown, like I said, it's the crown jewel of my entire collection of anything. Like, this thing is amazing. Um, I won it. I did not purchase it. I won it, which makes it all the more special. And it makes me feel better about kind of bragging about how cool it is. Because I won it. And this is like a once-in-a-lifetime thing that you don't... 
It was in a draw that was probably had six or seven hundred people take part in this draw. So the odds of winning it were really low. But I somehow managed to win it. And I'm going to show you what that is right now. And that is my life-size Batman Arkham City statue. I won this in a draw at a Warner Brothers booth at a trade show. And I lost my mind. Um, this thing is amazing. Um, it is the Arkham Knight Batman, which out of the Arkham series is definitely my favorite look for Batman. It was my favorite game. Arkham City and Arkham Origins and Arkham Knight I could never get into. Um, but just, it's a basic gray and black costume. Um, very well detailed. It's got his utility belt. These things kind of pull out. I uh, won't do it now. But yeah, I they had doing a draw for this statue. I of course got a ticket for it. Everyone got this was the big prize to win. And um the ticket had seven digits. They called out the first six. And we're like, would the ten people who could potentially be winners step forward? So if you had zero through nine after those first six did six digits, you step forward. My number was six. And it's like this guy said six in slow motion. Like, oh, you get the idea. And then I don't even remember the next five minutes. Apparently I hugged a lot of people. I jumped up and down. I screamed and yelled. I don't, I literally forget the few minutes after they called my number. And then I had to give Warner Brothers my information. And then they shipped him out in a big box not too long after. Um... And yeah, he's been living in my basement ever since. And uh, yeah, this is the coolest thing I've ever won, that's for sure. It's definitely the highlight of this room. Um, I got, This is the kind of the thing, I, people come over and visit, this is definitely the, the conversation piece, if you want to call it that. So yeah, this is, I'm really, really proud of this, I'm really happy. Like I said, I've never won anything this cool in my life. Um, this is probably it. Like, I don't think I'll ever win anything again and I'm fine with that. So anyway, that's kind of the big, it takes up a lot of space and I move it, I have to move it around a lot, but anyway, I'm going to slowly go back and just show you the room in a nutshell. This is my, my room, my geek den, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. Now I will tell you. I change this room around a lot. I could do one of these videos probably every six months or less. Um, this is the way it is now, but like these shelves have been like those shelves were on this wall once and Batman was over here once and this shelf, I'm probably getting you dizzy, was over here. One, like it's been all over the place and I do because I, I like the room the way it is right now, but I get antsy and I like to change things around. Uh, minor things like posters and pictures and shelf layouts I change all the time, but this is what it is now. This is all the same stuff no matter where they are. And um, yeah, this is my my geek den, my sanctuary. It's where I keep all my keep all my shit. Um, so yeah, there it is. Thanks a lot, guys, for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Let me know what you think. Like, what do you think of the room? Is it is it too much? Is it too cluttered? Do you like the layout? Um, I mean, I, I'm not a big clutter fan, so I try to get things kind of organized so they don't look cluttered as much as possible. But it's kind of hard when there's all this crap. And I've gotten rid of a lot of stuff, too. i got to get rid of more stuff. I really do. I need to kind of thin this room out a bit. But for now, this is it. And, uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. On behalf of Batman... You guys have a good one.